Greenhouse gases are constantly in the news, but what really is the difference between these gases and the oxygen and nitrogen that make up most of our atmosphere? How does that difference affect the surface temperature of Earth and other planets? Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is one of the gases found in our atmosphere that can absorb and therefore re-emit infrared radiation. This experiment is designed to demonstrate that phenomenon and provide a visual representation for how CO2 can affect the surface temperature of a planet. First, we take two coffee cans with both ends cut off and seal one with plastic food wrap and rubber bands on both ends. This is our dry air can. We then use an identical coffee can and fill it with CO2 using a fire extinguisher. Because CO2 is heavier than air, we know that our can is now mostly filled with CO2. As the solid CO2 goes through sublimation, it expands so we must leave a slight opening for any extra gas to escape. After all solid CO2 is gone, we can fully seal the top. After placing the two cans on their stands, notice that they are both transparent to visible light. Here is a before picture using the infrared camera. In fact, we can see that both cans are also mostly transparent to light in the wavelength that our infrared camera can detect, 7.5 to 15 micrometers. Next, we switch on two sources of infrared light and place them at an equal distance from each can for two minutes. After both gases have been heated for two minutes, we remove the heat lamps and take a second picture. The result is remarkable. When we look straight through the air can, we just see the walls before, but when we look through the CO2 can, we see something new. Carbon dioxide gas mainly absorbs infrared radiation only with wavelengths and certain bands, which is why we can see through it with our camera. For example, one absorption band is very close to 4.4 micrometers. However, some of the radiation from the heat lamps falls into this range, gets absorbed by the gas, and heats it. The gas in turn transfers that heat it absorbs to the thin plastic window, which then emits its own spectrum of radiation that can be picked up by the camera. We tried many different experiments, swapping the positions of the CO2 in air, switching the heating lamps, and playing with numerous other variables. The results were always the same. The can with the CO2 radiates extra heat after removing the heat lamps. To connect this observation with climate, note that visible light from the sun warms the Earth's surface. On the moon, that energy can leave the surface by radiation of infrared light out to space. But on Earth, such radiation faces an obstacle. Our experiments showed that even a few centimeters of CO2 can absorb energy significantly and then re-release it. Some of that re-radiated energy is directed back down to the Earth, so the overall effect is to slow down energy loss and keep the planet warmer than it would otherwise be. In our atmosphere, CO2 is only present in trace amounts, unlike in this experiment, and the main components, molecular nitrogen and oxygen, don't absorb infrared radiation. But our atmosphere is also many kilometers deep, and so even small amounts of CO2 can still be significant. Artificially increasing CO2 risks pushing the effect to a higher level. Much more detailed measurements and calculations are needed to estimate the effects of artificial CO2 emissions on climate. For example, Earth's infrared emission spectrum is different from that of our source. Our goal with this simple demonstration was to show the general phenomenon of infrared absorption by a gas.